What's up gamers? In this video, I'm going to be showing you some amazing shiny hunting locations and shiny hunting methods for normal type Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet so you can get awesome shiny Pokemon like these. So for this sandwich, we're going to be using two tofu, yellow, red, and green bell pepper, a prosciutto, and any salty herba mystica of your choice. I'm doubling it up on sweet for this one. Make it nice and professional like me. Throw that bread on top. Oh no. And that's your sandwich. Uh, Let's see if it works. So we got Sparkling Power Normal, Tidal Power Normal, and Encounter Power Normal. Some Pokemon that I want to mention that we aren't covering in this video is Grafii, which is covered in the Poison video, Indeedee, which is covered in the Psychic video and has better spawns in that one, and Cyclizar, which is covered in the Dragon video. All those Pokemon have better spawns in their specific videos. So if you want to hunt down Lechonk, the best spot to go is the early area right at your house, right when you're about to turn into the new area when you start your game. Pretty much right here, Poco Path. This is going to be a great Lechonk spot because lechonks are spawning everywhere they're by the trees they're on the right they're going to be on the left in this area they're just everywhere and all you're going to be looking for is a pink lechonk make sure to check above there they're on this entire pathway the cool part is you can basically run this pathway up to this area and also because we have a normal type sandwich you're going to be bumping into some fletchling families which gives you a chance at getting the fletchlings while you're focusing on your lechonk so that way you can grab yourself a talon flame pretty early even though we did talk about that in our fire video so what I like to do is run to this palm tree pretty much. And then as I walk, there's another Fletchling family right over there. There's my Lechonks and... I slowly go back. There's another Fletching family. I have my Lechonk. So what I'm looking out for are basically these shinies. And it's going to be very simple from the first area to do it. It's just simple paths going back and forth. It's very focused on Lechonks and Fletchlings. You'll get the occasional hop up you might find flying during the early day. But that's not really going to interfere with your main target. Because it's going to be pretty simple to focus on that. So you can despawn them all out by tapping that fence. And as soon as you tap that fence, you can walk back in and know you're going to get Lechonks spawning again. So repeat that over and over again if you're trying to get to your lechonks and if you just want to dual hunt those fletchlings on the way the reason why we're not focusing too hard on fletchlings in this video is because it's going to be a fire type as it evolves and that's going to be covered in the fire type and also our flying video this is the part of the video where you're going to hit that subscribe button so that you can have shiny luck it's a good trade right you get shiny luck in pokemon locations and i get a subscribe it works out the next location that we're going to be heading to is going to be at north province area number three this is going to be where we're going to be hunting down our chances we usually talked about this in my experience guide we just use a regular sandwich to get these chances to spawn but with encounter power three and shiny power three you're bound to get a nice amount of these chances spawning everywhere you're going to be looking for a green one when you're up here but if you also want to do some experience farming and take these out while you're here this would also be nice so they're going to spawn everywhere and these guys run the moment they see you but usually in this game shiny pokemon are going to be protected like the D Dunsparce will not run away from you. They will just stay above. Uh, Voltorbs don't explode when they find you in the desert. I doubt the green chance is going to run away from you, but always just make sure to save in front of the Pokemon just in case. And what you want to do is basically you can explore the whole entire beach. Basically just go run the entire grass route, despawn a bunch of chances. They're going to run away from you anyway, which is going to make life easy. And then go back and, and see a couple more. You might get the occasional Blissey to show up. So if you're lucky, you might even be able to get a shiny Blissey out of this entire area. Area. But that's pretty much it for the Chansey route. This is a good spot. So get some experience farming while you're up here. Take out some Chanseys. Get some materials that you can sell from the Chanseys for LP. And grab a Shiny here while you can. If you want to focus on a very nice Swablu area, nothing really interfering with you at all, you're going to head over to the West Province, Area 1 North. And what we're going to do from there is just travel this lovely pathway down to Kaskarafa. And then I'm going to show you the town reset for these over there. But if you want to do a little bit of traveling, <laughs> this whole entire pathway is going to be filled with Swablu. And the benefit of specifically hunting for Swablu alone is that it eventually is going to evolve into a dragon type. So you're going to get yourselves a nice flying dragon, which is is Altaria, and that is a, a big benefit for you to have in this game. This is a, <laughs> it's it's nice that the pre-evolution is not a dragon type and that you can easily look for it as you're traveling down this pathway because all you're going to be looking for is a gold Swablu and this is a great way to get it. So just go ahead, explore down this entire pathway. You can make a right, check out some shortcuts, but this will be the only Pokemon that is going to be spawning here. Nothing else should be interfering with you when you have your normal sandwich in this area, which is pretty nice. You can also look to the right over here. You'll get some spawning over in this distance 
There we go. And then my favorite part is when you head to the town, because by heading to the town, we're going to have a little bit more fun in terms of, hey, we can start doing town resets. So if you want to do the town reset, you can simply just come over to Kaskarafa. You can see how they just despawn and then come out of Kaskarafa, just like this. And then you'll get the spawns in front of you. You see, they start coming in. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look at that. Look how many Swablu spawn. For the Swablu spawns, since they're in the grass, you might want to do the double home trick. And for those who want to know how to do the double home trick, you go into your settings and then you go down to system and then you just scroll down from system and you're going to find the zoom button. Just enable the zoom button. And once you're done with that, you just double tap your home and then you can see. And all you're going to be looking for is a golden bird. So we get this many spawns happening, right? So it should be easy to close them out and then come right back out to cast Karafa. And eventually you will be getting yourselves a shiny Swablu that you can evolve into the lovely Altaria and you get yourselves a nice golden dragon. If you're trying to hunt down Rufflet, a very, very good spot is going to be the Asado Desert. This is going to be located right over here for those who don't know. You want to do a town reset at Kaskarafa. The reason why is it's very simple. Look how easy this is. Ready? Go to town and pop back out. And these birds are literally everywhere. And all you're going to do is quickly just pop your home button, zoom in, and you're going to be looking for a brown bird instead of the common blue. So when you do the quick zoom in, you're going to see that. And the cool part about these Pokemon is they tend to spawn in groups. So if you don't only want to do the Kaskarafa reset, you can also walk around the desert and you'd probably bump into one. I, in fact, was just walking around the desert one day and I walked into one. So that is another option. You will get solo ones that do spawn, but they spawn in, in groups around this desert. So you could walk around or do the town reset. It's totally up to you on how you want. But I, I think town resets are always the easiest methods in order to knock down certain shiny Pokemon out. So probably stick with that. Make your life a lot easier. There's a good amount of them that spawn here right by the town and uh, you should be getting a shiny pretty fast when you are in this area so good luck hunting this down okay so if you're hunting down for zongoose by the way the, the shiny is really cool it's like a blue instead of a red so it's gonna be really obvious and i know a lot of people want this one but if you're hunting down zongoose this is gonna be a pretty much an area where you're gonna rock around them they're gonna be around these lake areas and roaming the grass around here uh, it's the counterpart to surviper which is pretty cool and you can see around this lake they're starting to spawn now, you need to be aware that while you are in this area, there are going to be a lot of other normal Pokemon. Litleo is a normal type. Lechonk is a normal type. Stantler is a normal type. But you're going to be primarily focusing on these guys when you are in this area. So you can see them spawning around the lake. What I also notice about Zongoose is that they take a little bit of time to respawn in. So you want to be careful to just slow down because I noticed there's a little bit of a delay. And you can see as I move further out, we're getting some spawns over here. We have some spawns behind us. And if I pull back and despawn out that group, group over there and then pull back forward. There we go. We should be getting them to spawn as we move back here again. Yep, there they are spawning in very slowly at that rate. So what I like to do is you can either do a picnic reset or you could just rotate around each of these lakes. This is the specific area I like really roaming around. These two lakes are my primary hotspot go to. So like right there between there, you can run around there. You'll find them around different areas of the lakes, but this is where I like to stay. So if you're trying to get your Zongoose, this will be your spot and hopefully you can get a nice one there. They are really cool Pokemon. On. If you're trying to hunt down some young goose, this is a very good spot. It's going to be the inlet grotto. Pretty much you just jump down from the lighthouse in the early part from Poco Poco. Drop down here. This is where your legendary Pokemon walks in at the beginning of the game. And you should have noticed a young goose here at the start along with Diglets and Houndors. So when we use these sandwiches to isolate them out, it's going to be a lot easier to get these Pokemon to spawn. And in here is going to be just a pure solo spawn of nothing else but this Pokemon. That's all you're going to find when you're inside of this place, which is really cool because you don't have to deal with any other Pokemon, nothing else spawning. You can just relax, sit down, and just worry about only these. And what you're going to be looking for is a very pink, shiny Pokemon. So just be careful. These spawn a group out, uh, respawn them in. Remember, they are solo spawns, so you have to just go a little bit slow to despawn them. You can't just run at full speed, but they seem to do spawn in pretty quick. So good luck over here getting your Yongoose. It should be easy to evolve that and get yourselves a nice pink gumshoes once you're done with that. Um, very easy Pokemon to get when you're in here hunting. All right, so in this area right here, this is the fast teleport spot. The Colonnade Hollow is going to be a spot where you're going to find gumshoes as well as the young gooses around them. So uh, here we go. There's gumshoes. There's young goose right around it. And the cool part about this is they are in families. So what you can do is you can ignore everything else in this cave if you choose to do so and run around at full speed. And 
what you'll be finding around this cave are simply families that do spawn up. Now, it's not as hot. The RNG can be bad, like as you're seeing on my screen. That's just realistic. You will see the family spawn of the gumshoes and you will get the occasional Dunsparces showing up. But overall, I've noticed really good success in terms of just the families showing up. So if you care about family spawns and kind of zooming through them alone, this is a spot to go through. There's another family over there. There's some solo ones here. There's a family. There's another family. There we go. So yeah, just start looping around this area. Uh, this might be the good spot for you to get one. And hey, who knows? Maybe you get the bonus of a Dunsparce here. But when you're zooming really fast, you're only going to be concerned about the family spawn. So good luck getting your gumshoes and young goose here. It's going to be pink. So focus on the color. In fact, every shiny here is going to be pink. The Dunsparce is also going to be pink. Good luck. So to make the EV hunt a lot more accessible and easy for everyone, my goal was to get it to show up at a good amount. And the best way to do that is by doing a date skip for a mass outbreak. And if you don't like doing date skipping, that's totally okay. Just wait for 1159 and be in this area, pop a sandwich, and at 12 o'clock your time, if it doesn't become a EV spawn, well, then you could just wait until it does the next day. So you don't have to do that. And everyone who does date skipping or doesn't date skipping, you can play the way you want. And those are the options. Now, the benefit of doing the skip by this area or having a mass outbreak by Medali means that you can go in and out of the town like that, have all the EVs despawn, and then you can come back out into the area again and have all the EVs just show up again here. Now, the cool part about having all these EVs here is you can increase the chances by quite a bit. So knocking out 60 of these EVs on top of having the shiny charm and then doing a free reset by the town with the shiny sandwich is going to guarantee you getting a lot of EVs. So I probably am going to do that this video because it's going to be a very easy thing. And I'm going to collect an entire Evolution team. Okay, I knocked out 60 EVs, and with the Shiny Charm, 60 plus Pokemon knocked out in the Outbreak, plus Sparkling Power level 3, we are sitting at a 1 out of 512 chance that we will have a Shiny EV in front of us. So I've maximized this out, and I can literally just farm Shiny EVs as I choose. What I'm going to do is just reset in and out of town nonstop until I get my Shiny EV. That's simple. So tap in, tap out, look around for my Shiny EV. There it is. EV, <laughs> Shiny EV, baby. And at that point, you can pretty much just rinse and repeat until you get a whole entire team of shiny Eevees or just get the Eevees for every single Pokemon you need. Just make sure that the outbreak does not reset. So make sure you keep pulling back your time before midnight so you can stay on this date and continue to farm these Eevees nonstop until you are good to go by just coming in and out of the town. Over by Lavincia South, there's going to be this spot right over here when you face out this land that's going to spawn in some nice squawk ability. And what you're going to be looking for in the shiny is just the top of its head to be slightly more pink. You'll occasionally will also get some tandem mouse to also spawn in this area, so you can keep eyes on that. Now, I noticed the birds, if they're not spawning in a pack, will take a little bit of time to show up. They also do show up at the bottom of this hill, so you can occasionally look down. Uh, the best you could do is use the double home button. Just look down and see, oh, if they are a pink or not. There's some over, there's tandem mouse as well, so keep in mind squawk ability hunting, tandem mouse hunting, it's not really focused on a tandem mouse, they're just here. So if your awareness is really good about what a shiny could be or versus what it not, you can maybe grab it. They're just darker than the regular ones. That's pretty much it. All right. So what we want to do over here is just continue to pop back into town, come back out, and you're going to be looking pretty much for four colors of squawk ability while you're here. It's going to be green, white, yellow, or blue, and just look for the pink on its head. Make sure to always peek over to the side. And that is why you peek over to the side, because if you look below, there is our green one with the pink hair. So I'm just going to whoop. Another really good spot for squawk ability is going to be in Artizone. So I'll call this the Artizone squawk ability spot. You're going to place yourself right over here by this pond looking pool area right behind you. You see the pool right there. And over here, you're guaranteed to constantly see squawk ability in the field in front of you. So when I pull back just like this, they go away. And as soon as they pull up in the front, I'm going to get my squawk abilities right there. There's the blue ones. There's some green ones. There's some more blue ones. And like I mentioned, make sure you have the double home zoom in ready to go, which can be enabled from your settings menu on the Nintendo Switch, and I'll just be looking for the pink on its head. So this is another great spot to hunt squawk ability. I suggest the Lavencia one, and I suggest this one since they do spawn out here as well. Like I said, also you get the occasional tandem mouse showing up, but again, your goal is to focus on the birds. Keep your eye on the prize when you're here. You got four colors to collect, and I believe you guys can easily finish off this shiny collection very fast by doing these in and out of town reset methods. Okay, I just got to this location to record 
record uh, this part for this bird. And the shiny just shows up in front of me. That is crazy. Oh my gosh. Oh, look how good it looked. A shiny star raptor. So now that I'm going to explain the location, what you want to do is head over to this teleport point right over here. It is going to be the Gracia Stones teleport by the Socorat Trail. Now, once you come over here, yes, you are going to see some star raptors showing up on the side over here. That's not the point. Uh, we're going to head to our spot where they're going to spawn in really, really great amounts. And so I'm going to make my way back up here this time we won't be interfered with a shiny this time this is where i got my shiny last time there they are okay and what you want to do is head over to this bridge because once we go to this bridge spot you're gonna see so many that's another shiny i'm trying to record the video and i got my second shiny already this is just showing you how powerful this is now that we got that shiny and it's done you you, you can just see how easy it is to farm these birds over here you what you want to do is at the moment you cross over this bridge in this exact spot so i'm opening my map it's gonna be this bridge right over there you're gonna see so many on this side. Ready? Watch this. Watch how crazy it is here. Look at the sky. <laughs> Look how many start to spawn on this. This side is crazy. There's a lot here. And it's going to be very easy to, one, you can do a picnic reset. Two, you can just walk out of frame until they all disappear. But the amount of these that spawn is going to be ridiculous. And you can get yourselves a shiny for this Pokemon very, very easily over here. So good luck getting your Star Raptor. I got two just while trying to record this section of the video. If you want to focus on Hand of mouse hunts. This is going to be a great area. It's going to be located by the Pokemon League, and you don't have to deal with many Pokemon except Iglybuff and Tandem Mouse. Now, if you want to isolate Tandem Mouse away from the other Pokemon, a very good method to do that will be date skipping while you're right in this area, or by having the normal sandwich and waiting for 11.59 at night, and then letting it shift over to the next day. This is a great spot because there's so many that spawn in this area, and the crazy part about Tandem Mouse is once you do get it shiny, you have a one in a hundred chance of evolving this into the three family mouse hold mouse hold that three family is going to be around level 25 it's going to be in your party just going to randomly change while it's in your party and it's going to be a chance at it so catching a bunch of these shinies to get the rare three form is going to be really important this is why i also suggest that you do a date skip in order to get the outbreak in the area i have done date skips to do that and it does work where it helps increase the amount in this area so focus on that if you can and you'll be able to definitely capitalize on the fact of you getting a three family mouse hold otherwise you can probably collect the shiny mouse hold as four family a lot easier and i'm also told that you'll find them in raid dens the rare family so keep that in mind so it's not a crazy difficult hunt to get the three family but you're gonna have to need it to be shiny in the first place so good luck with your mouse hunt i believe you'll be able to get your mouse hold all right so if you want to hunt down some iggly buffs and jiggly buffs head over to this part of katondo west and you just gotta do town resets here which is pretty fun and what you notice is that jiggly buffs and iggly buffs will start flying away in the wind and the lucky part for you guys who are hunting if a shiny one does happen to appear it won't get blown away by the wind and that'll be your key factor in identifying if there is a shiny or a non-shiny in the area and the cool part about this whole town reset is that the rain's going to be a great assistance to you and yeah don't make sure they don't blow in front of your face like this they're literally blowing away in the background <laughs> There they are. And they're resetting. What? That's so cool. They're resetting in battle. Wow. Talk about awesome. That I didn't even realize they do that out of battle. So yeah, you just have to come back into town, come back out in this area, and uh, you'll get the Jiggly buffs and Iggly buffs to respawn. Again, this is just a rain example and something fun for you to know if you are hunting them. So this is a great tool to use. Rain is a great thing. But if you're not hunting these in the rain, you just have to keep resetting and make sure you're paying attention to the eyes as you've seen what these shinies do look like for these Pokemon. So good luck hunting your Jiggly buffs and Iggly buffs. Remember, you're going to come over here to the Corton a west spot if you're trying to specifically hunt these two which are very normal wait a second that guy hasn't blown away oh my gosh it worked he's not blowing away wait a second it's not blowing away everything is blowing away except this jigglypuff oh my gosh that is a shiny jigglypuff and this is why we hunt these <laughs> so cool here we go boom Oh, oh, that's so sick. And that's how we find a shiny Jigglypuff in the rain. So if you come over to this side of Medali, the Medali East side, you're going to be bumping into a lot of Meowth and Persian and the occasional Eevees that do show up in this location. Now, you can do town resets here in order to get these shines to show up, but you have to be aware of what the shiny does look like. So here is an uh, image on the screen just so you can tell the difference between the shinies. It's very difficult 
difficult at a distance. So this is why you have to pay attention to this. So you can simply do some nice town resets here. Go in and out of the town. Medali just like that. Pop right back out. And you'll see all these Persians and Meow show up. Now, something you also have to be aware about is that Dittos can disguise themselves as these Pokemon. So in a way, you want to just pay attention to if the Persians are going to run away from you. If they do, you have a chance at having a Ditto. Otherwise, they are definitely Persians. And most of the time, you will get a Persian. Like this is a Ditto right here. There we go. There, there's your Ditto. And this one will try to dodge us and not want to really attack us. So you will get the occasional Ditto, like I mentioned, but you just have to knock it out and see if it is a shiny, if it does spawn. So you can constantly just repeat this until you happen to get a Ditto. But I find this to be the best spot for Meowth and Persian. This side is very good. Now, this pathway and Glaciato Mountain is going to be very fun, running from all the way here to about there. And the fast port that you want to come to is the Glaciato Mountain Watchtower, or you can enter it from the North Province Area 1, which is where I am currently entering this area. Now, here you're going to get families of Pokemon spawning, so you don't have to slow down. You're going to get all the Pyroars because, fun fact, Pyroars are fire normal types. I was also a little mind blown because in our fire video, we covered these guys, but here, they're just going to show up like that. And they're going to be a lot more uh, different in their shinies, so you can move a little bit fast here. You're also going to be getting Litleos spawning in groups with these Pokemon, so keep your eyes out for Litleos. You'll also get Young Gooses and Gumshoes showing up here, so keep your eyes peeled. So what you want to do is just run straight down this path. Make sure you're paying attention to all the possible shinies that could happen. Make sure to look at all the families, but run pretty quick. That's a static weave out. There's their Pyroars. There's a whole nother Pyroar and Litleos. You gotta make sure, don't, don't miss the mountain spawns up here or on this rock. That's another group of Leos and Pyroar, and I'm just gonna keep heading down towards the area, and I see more Pyroars here. There we go. Another group of Pyroars, and I'm gonna continue going down here. There's a group of Gumshoes, Young Goose, and I keep just making my way down to that bridge since this is the fast way to get Pokemon to spawn. You are going to get majority, though, Pyroar and Litleos. That just seems what it's more skewed towards. The Young Gooses and Gumshoes, not as much, but there is that chance of that showing up. So continue to make your way down this pathway until you stop seeing those specific spawns. And pretty much you could just do this nonstop until you get a shiny. So good luck with the shinies over here. If you're a Pokemon Scarlet player and you head over to this area, the North Province Area 2, which is basically the Bamboo Forest, you're going to be stuck doing a dual hunt because we are cursed with orangaroos just showing up every single spot even with a normal sandwich and there's no distinct separation between using a psychic sandwich and a normal sandwich these guys will show up no matter what in this area but the key hunt over here is going to be for ursaring and teddy ursa these two are going to be the ones that we are targeting here but scarlet players like i mentioned we're going to be seeing this orangaroo everywhere and so everywhere you walk in this forest you're going to be spotting these two pokemon now pokemon violet players will probably have a very, very nice hunt here with your Ursaring and Teddy Ursa because that's the only Pokemon that you will see here with a normal sandwich. And you don't have to deal with our monkey like the Scarlet players. So Violet players are going to have a great time. All you're going to be looking out for is your green teddy bear. But Scarlet players, just keep your eyes on Oranguru for the sake of having a little bit more of a pink monkey showing up. And that will be the way you're going to be getting your shiny in this area. Here's what it looks like for a Pokemon Violet player who's hunting over here. Look at that. Just that's it. No monkeys interfering with your hunt here. No orangaroos. Just, just non-stop families of Teddy Ursa over here. That's it. Just Teddy Ursa families and Ursaring. That's all you have to see here. And this hunt is way better on Pokemon Violet. Alrighty, so there is a great spot over here. So if you go to Cortundo and come a little bit south, it's going to be a very nice spot to hunt some Scovets. It's going to be a nice spot to hunt some Shrudels, which are a normal poison type. Uh, Scovets just pure normal. And if we go further down in the area, we're going to start to see our little Azurals, who are actually a normal fairy type because they haven't gained the water typing yet, which is such a weird thing to do in Pokemon. I don't know why they just didn't leave it as water. It just interferes with our hunt. Anyway, so if you are closer by this tree area, you can see there's a bunch of skull vets on the floor. This is what the shiny looks like. You have also Shrudel, which you'll be looking for in Shrudels are the purple eyes, and these will eventually evolve into Graph I I. So pay attention to the squirrels and the Shrudels in this area. Now, you can also head towards the tree, and you'll also find a bunch of these there. What you could do is you could just auto battle if you choose, or do the entire despawn map 
method. Uh, or you could just do picnic reset method. There's so many things you can do when there are a bunch of Pokemon walking around. But this is a very powerful spot for these squirrels and shrewdles. Now, like I mentioned, Azuro is technically part of this entire area. So if we move a little bit more towards this side, a little bit more to the to the east, you'll start to see Azuros hopping around. And Azuros are pretty much, like I mentioned, a normal fairy type. And they haven't gained the water yet. So you'll be on the lookout for this shiny if you are over here. And this is pretty much a nice division. They're not really interfering too much with that side. And they got their own little spot. So if you want the pre-evolution, this is a great spot. You can despawn them out really easily and respawn them in by just walking away from them. And I think it uh, makes these hunts very doable in this area. It's not too complicated. It's not overly run by each other. And there's enough of each spawn where it won't mess with each other. So Squovet, Shrudo over here. And as you move towards this side, it's going to be Azuro. Okay, so if you walk out of Artazone right over here from the east exit and walk straight out, you're going to get a couple Pokemon that will spawn. You're going to get Lechonks, just basically a lot of normal type Pokemon right from here. Lechonks, you're going to get uh, Teddy Ursa, you're going to get your Litleo. It's chaos, by the way. So if you're in the mood for a very mixed up hunt and just be like, hey, I want to start my normal shiny hunting and I'm game for anything, you can literally pop in and out of the area. Now, something I noticed is that Komala has a very hard time getting its own solo area. I've not been able to really hard locate Kumala on its own. Um, so this is a spot where you can get it. And like I mentioned, this is a chaotic hunting spot. But yeah, this is one spot where you can get Kumala. Let's go over some other spots where you can get them though. Next, we're going to be entering Tag Tree Thicket. This is going to be another place where Kumala does spawn. You're going to notice there is going to be Oinkalones and Shrudels. It's it's very chaotic. And as you're exploring, you'll also find some Grafi eyes. You're going to find groups of the Squovet and its evolution. And then you can sit. There you go. There's a Kumala uh, sitting right over here, right over there. There's, there's, there. there's our boy. Yeah, there's our Kumala. So the best way to really isolate this Pokemon out is to have your normal sandwich on, do some date skips in areas where they do spawn, and then you'll eventually will get one to spawn in its location. But it's going to be difficult because there's just so many other normal Pokemon that spawn around it. Let me take you to the final spot where we do get a bunch of these guys as well. Okay, so when you come to Medali over here, it's going to be another chaotic gut. As soon as you step out over here, West Province Area 3, you're going to also find Komalas around this area. Now, I notice it's not as packed as the other ones. You will find Komalas here. You will have some Oinkalones, but I've, I've noticed you do get a little bit more separation and space when looking for these Komalas. So you can already see in this frame, you have one over there, two over here, three here, and four, and there's number five. And all you'll be looking for is that log. What you can do is rotate around this area. There are Oinkalones and everything else we've talked about that join in on these chaotic hunts, but it might be easier to start spotting the Komalas out. So these are three locations where you will find these Komalas. So good luck uh, hunting in these spots. You will have probably other shiny normal Pokemon show up. And I do apologize about the chaos, but you are going to have to run a mass outbreak if you want to really separate these from everybody else in the game. But I would say Medali is probably your better shot at hunting these guys down. So this is a spot where we're going to try to hunt for Stantler. Stantler is not going to be easy to isolate out just by itself because there's just so many normal Pokemon. But if you want to keep your eyes just focused on Stantler specifically, this is an area where you want to go. I'm not too worried about Stantler for my collection because I'm just bringing mine over from Legends Arceus. But yeah, Stantlers will spawn around this area. And what you want to keep your eyes out and pinned on is for a greenish Stantler. You're going to obviously have other Pokemon spawning in here like Litleos and Young Gooses or Young Gooses. I, I say Young Goose. I don't know why I'm sorry. Keep your eye on the prize while you're here and just make sure you're aware of what the other shinies do look like while you're here. Pink shinies for young goose. The Litleos will look like Simbas. And like I mentioned, the Stantlers will be green. And all you really have to do is just despawn out a group of these. I just walk this little pathway over and over again after you just knock out and despawn this whole entire group. Just like that. They're all despawned and then just go back and you'll get them to spawn again. And I basically would just repeat this pathway over and over again until I get the shiny I want. If you're not satisfied, remember, you can always do some date skipping and aim for a mass outbreak. That's always the other plan while your sandwich is active because that gives you faster chances of that Pokemon showing up. But otherwise, just simply do this over again. Come back out here, despawn a group of these guys and turn around and just reset it all over again. And you should be able to get your Stantler. I'm really sorry that it's not a clean Stantler hunt, but this is the best I can come up with. But remember, 
if you guys find out any better information than me always write it down in the comments below and people who are looking at the comments make sure to like their comments so it goes to the top so to hunt the spring form of deerling which is pretty much going to be the pink ones you're going to be looking for a pink flower on its head as you run around the area basically this entire area at the starting area towards the south province area five south province area one this spots are gonna just randomly have families spawning and because the families are just randomly gonna spawn in front of you you're gonna be able to spot shiny ones pretty easily because all you have to look for is the pink flower on its head so when you're hunting these guys down just be aware that the faster you move the easier it is for the families to spawn because they do show up in groups you will occasionally get the solo one as you're running around but like 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 this one over here but you will get the families and that is the best way in my opinion to hunt down the spring form in the first area and i just really go back and forth until i get them and it's going to be easy to identify when a whole group spawns because you're just looking on their head to see if there is a pink flower if there's no pink flower that is not a shiny you just continue to move on so this is pretty much where i am hanging out uh, you can do these runs back and forth in order to get them there are a bunch of other normal pokemon that do spawn around here but if you're focused on specifically that deerling then just go ahead and do exactly what i did in order to get a group to show up all right this is going to be for deerling and sawsbuck but it's going to be for the winter form one this is going to be found pretty much by Glaciato Mountain. Uh, pretty much that Pokemon Center. You're going to get tons of these to spawn in the area. And what you're going to be looking for is just pink flowers on the head and a lighter color on the Sawsbuck. So if you're hunting specific forms of Sawsbuck, that's pretty much how to do it. These are just going to be spawning in families up here. This is where the winter one specifically is going to spawn. And the trick here is just to despawn them in and out because they do spawn in families. So you don't have to really slow down. You can go pretty fast and just look around. Make sure to just be paying attention to the body. Look for the light colored sawsbuck and pink flowers on the deerling pretty quick to go ahead and hunt down the winter form this is pretty much going to apply for the entire area south of lavincia itself you're going to be getting a lot of the evolution of our lechonk so oinkalones are going to be here when i made my sandwich and came over here this is where i got my my shiny just spawned over here there are so many that spawn in the area also when you're just running around this area you're going to get a lot of these deerlings which are going to be the summer deerlings these summer Summer dealings are going to be green and they're going to have a pink flower on their head so this is where you're going to be hunting for those as you're just traveling you'll just you're just going to see a lot of these pokemon all over the place just like that the pigs and you're going to get families of these guys that spawn now if you want to specifically hunt these at high speed you can run fast get those family groups to spawn you'll also get these pigs along the way if you slow down but if you don't want to slow down you can just go fast and wait for those families of pokemon to spawn just like this there we go so pretty much around the whole area right out of Lavincia, you can go and hunt down some of these specific pokemon the pigs especially right by the spawn area are going to be big 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 and yeah that's pretty much how you're going to get these deerling the next hunt that we're going to be doing is going to be located in the Sokarat Trail. And we're only going to be specifically hunting two Pokemon here. It's going to be Sawsbuck, Deerling, and the Slacking. Now, specifically with the Sawsbuck, we're going to be going for the Autumn form here. So again, pink flowers on the babies. And the Sawsbuck is going to be a much lighter brown color. Now, for Slackings, <laughs> they're just going to be sitting everywhere around this area. And you're going to be looking for a, a more orange no Slacking. And the little fur around it is going to be orange or a little bit more yellow. The brown's going to be a little more saturated or pretty close to this one, but the face is what you're really going to be able to tell the difference. So orange nose and a little more yellow colored hair around it. So those are pretty much the shinies here. Uh, and it's the only two Pokemon that are going to spawn here. You can see as you're waiting here, you see so many slackings come in. So they do take a bit to spawn in, but oh, this is so many. And this, the crazy part is it is a third evolution. So if you're going for the third Evo, this will be the spot. So when you're hunting here, just make sure to zoom out. Make sure you're paying attention to all these saws and deerlings if you're not caring about slacking as much because you already have it you could just run at full speed to try to complete the forms of the saws buck because if you run fast you'll be able to see the family spawn in pretty quick and eventually you'll be able to bump into a shiny here and just you know sometimes i gotta bump into these guys if you're not too sure about the shade of the saws buck if it's shiny not just run into them or send out a pokemon auto battle that's always the safest way instead of just running away from all of them uh, right away so do that if you're trying to hunt down the saws buck so good luck over over here hunting down your slacking and your saws buck autumn form and uh, you'll definitely get a shiny because these are only two pokemon that really spawn here now there are two spots to hunt down ditto one is going to be in the medali area and the other spot where you do mass outbreaks is going to be by porto marinada now ditto alone is not going to be easy because
because not every Pokemon is going to be Ditto. For example, there is a Meowth over here and I send out my Pokemon and boom, I take out the Ditto. But then the next question is, how do you find the Ditto after that one, right? Because then you have to target each Pokemon and make sure if they're Ditto. And it's going to take a very long time if you put on your normal encounter power sandwich and then run around to every single Pokemon, you'll be there for ages. So the fastest way to do this is going to be by doing mass outbreaks. And the best way to get a mass outbreak is going to be by opening your map in that general location of where Ditto spawn and then doing a date skip. Now, if you don't like date skipping, don't worry. Just wait for 11.59 at night, pop your normal sandwich and wait. The sandwich actually helps influence the outbreaks that do happen within that area. So I'm going to open up my game and we're going to start refreshing. And you can see already the sandwich is having effects by putting normal Pokemon like Ursaring right in front of me. And once the Ditto does spawn on your map, you're going to mark that location up where that Ditto is and head over to that mass outbreak. Okay, and once you arrive at your mass outbreak, you're pretty much just gonna take out Pokemon and you have to figure out which ones are the ditto. So sometimes zooming in is a little bit difficult and because you have the normal sandwich on, it's gonna make it a little bit harder to identify where the dittos are. Now, this is a ditto because this, <laughs> this person is just running away from us. So that's gonna be easy. And that's gonna be our first ditto pretty much done in this mass outbreak. And for us to get maximum number of possibilities to get the shiny, we're gonna have to take out six 60 dittos. So I'm just going to get to work there and you're going to know how many dittos you have by it knocking out the specific goo. And so far, I'm just seeing Deerling hair, as you can see on the screen. And my Pokemon is pretty much just going to hang out in this area and keep knocking out Pokemon until we do <laughs> accumulate 60. Another trick that you can do in a ditto mass outbreak is if you see Pokemon that don't really resemble ditto in terms of they're not really running away from you, they look aggressive, then you could just simply back out, despawn that entire group of Pokemon like that. And then come back because sometimes it's going to be a little hard to hunt down for these dittos in these areas because you get a whole mix of them for some reason in ditto mass outbreaks so since i was having a hard time getting my shiny ditto to show up i figured i text austin and ask him if i could use his video footage to just basically show exactly how he was getting his to show up so in austin's video he was by the porto marinada lighthouse and he was hunting down ditto there and his dittos were basically disguised as meowth and as he was knocking them out he started to realize that the dittos spawned in as larger Pokemon. So they pretty much looked like larger Meowths. He also noticed that the behavior was very different on Ditto versus the other Pokemon to help distinguish it. And eventually he was able to knock out 60 of them in order to maximize out these shiny chances. And finally, in the video, he was able to get a shiny Ditto, which was absolutely amazing to see on his screen. And I will make sure to link his video down there if you want to follow along and just see how he does the entire Ditto hunt, which I thought was really fun. And and that's pretty much how you're going to get your best chances to hunt ditto and if you don't like mass outbreaks at all and you want to just do it the more difficult way feel free to pop in front of medali and just check each pokemon and hit them if you think they are behaving a little odd or a little bit different and they may remind you of possibly how a ditto would behave very passively you can do that as well if you don't like doing the mass outbreak i just feel it's a little bit more secure to be in a mass outbreak and knock down more dittos but eventually i know you guys will be be able to pull off a shiny ditto if you come to area zero from research lab station one you'll see some giraffe rigs spawning in over here and as you continue to move down you'll also sometimes get a family of them surrounded with a farigraph which is going to be pretty cool as you're going down you also will be seeing there we go a bunch of braveries they're going to be here as well so that covers that pokemon we got our giraffe rings covered that basically is going to be in the overworld with a psychic sandwich so that's not going to be too bad to find above with with a psychic but when we're popping a normal sandwich area zero is going to be your best bet to try to isolate and solo hunt these and pretty much what you're looking for in all the shinies with giraffe rig and bravery are signs of blue a little bit of blue is going to be your noticeable sign when you're looking at the shiny pokemon as you go to this hill over here wow there's a lot over there make sure you're paying attention to the blue nose on giraffe rig and this spot also gives a good amount of pokemon so let me see if i can back out here and pull out i think we could get some braveries to spawn here too can we get it can we get it this spot there they are all right so yeah we got some braveries up there if you jump down and head over to research station lab number two from research station lab one you'll also get a good amount of giraffe rigs and bravery they really take over the entire area it's 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 kind of insane so looking for a shiny here will not be too hard especially if you got the shiny charm you got your encounter sandwich up and you're just going back and forth these find these out con constantly and what you really want to do is really run this area up until the end of that 
waterfall. And make sure you're looking at all the Pokemon. Don't want to miss the shiny. Run it up until this waterfall here. And okay, that's why I said pay attention because there's the shiny. Yeah, and that's pretty much how you're going to be able to find shiny Pokemon in this area. So you can just run that entire pathway and get your shinies just like me. For those who are hunting Dunsparce and maybe they just want to shiny to Dunsparce, this is going to be your spot in Area Zero Research Station Lab number four. Now you're going to get random to Dunsparce showing up. So if you're not in the mood to hunt the three segmented rare one that everyone's going for, you can get the evolution here. You can also get Dunsparce show up here and you can figure out your own pathway that you would like to walk on because they just spawn everywhere. They're going to be the number one Pokemon that spawns with the normal sandwich here. So all you're looking out for is a pink one. Now, I know those who do want to do the crazy Dunsparce hunt, you're going to want Dunsparces in order to try to get the three segmented one because when you evolve them, it's going to be a one out of a hundred chance of you getting the shiny. Here's a fun clip from Crossing Casey who evolved his Dunsparce into a three segmented Dunsparce. Check it out. That, that's it. That's it. Wait, chat. I think that was normal. No, it's three tier, dude. <laughs> Oh, one out of a hundred chance to get a three segmented Dunsparce on top of it already being a shiny Pokemon. So this is an absolute W. Congrats, Casey. My spot that I like going to is over here, but I do know some people have complaints of you do get a spawn or two showing up at the bottom, but this rock is just going to be full of Dun Dunsparce and Dunsparce. These are all going to show up over there. And that's how I'm going to basically farm a bunch of them. Because if you're trying to go for three segmented, you don't want to, you know, get just one at a time. You want to try to get as many as possible and spawn them in because you need that one out of a hundred chance to get three segmented and you also would like to get a mark on those pokemon so this will be basically what you're doing if you just want to do the rock reset method go back and forth here until you do happen to get a pink one to spawn so i just like to do that it's it's a very passive way of not running around but make sure you're also peeking at the bottom because i know some people mention there are spawns that do show up at the bottom sometimes so sometimes they do sometimes they don't i don't notice them right now but some people say it so i just wanted to point that out there for everyone who's technically about these certain locations for these hunts so run around or walk up to this rock totally up to you good luck with your dunsparce hunts collect a bunch of them evolve them and hopefully you can get the three segmented one and what is going on over there now that you know your shiny hunting locations do you know about these ones for these pokemon you should click on this and check this one out